Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review thanks to the team over at Robot Kingdom. In today's video we're taking a look at the ZA04 Armageddon Uproar from Zeta Toys. This is their third release of the Armageddon line. Uh, I don't know why they do it like that. Uh, they did it with their Superion as well. They released the second and the first. Uh, but that's how they've done it and I don't care as long as we get all of the figures. This is of course their kind of masterpiece scaled brawl. Quick look around the box. There we have him in his bot mode. There we have part of the combined picture where he forms a foot. And there we have him in his tank mode. Basic box, does the job. Let's crack it open. Now, like all Zeta toys, he comes packaged in a lovely foam insert. We get a baggie with some additional track pieces, a couple of pins, and a gun. More foam, and there we have him in that box. He is jam-packed in there, but he is not going anywhere. Right now, out of the box, the first port of action is to try and get these treads down. You've got a latch just here on the side of the leg. Basically, we meant to thread these treads down. I'm wondering if there's too many links in this one. I found a couple in the box which I assumed had come off. Uh, maybe they were actually spares because this is... Um, I'm really trying to cram too much into a very small space here i think so i'm just going to pull that down like that and that's going to stay on that's that's not exactly perfect but you you get the idea and i like the fact that i've got working tracks but it is a job to get them in here you can pull this section here off it is tabbed in uh, i'm not sure if it's meant to come off or not but i pulled it off just to have a look inside what we're aiming for is that we're aiming to get them all wrapped up in curls down there and then bring this section across just to hold it into place obviously we need to separate the legs and you then need to flip your heel spurs and your big old toes out as well and we also need to just make sure that this knee is fully collapsed down and tabbed in to the back of that leg securely creating the knee joint and then finally as standard the tank turret is there uh, which really does hinder these legs uh, what I like to do I like to slide it all the way down to that bottom locking joint then fold it back over and you can just slide those tabs in like so and it brings the turret slightly higher up behind the head and here we have him out of his foam prison I was gonna say plastic but it's not is it <laughs> uh, after we tweak those treads a little bit and just maneuver that tank turret on the back there. He does look like a very acceptable interpretation of Brawl. Now, if you are not fussed about slight parts forming, you can always overcome the issue with the tank treads just by removing a section of the treads. For example, just taking, say, one section out. They've just got these clips on, and they just clip over the top of one another, like so. Just take one of those sections out and then we don't have half the tank tread to worry about but uh, I like to try and keep everything together because I do have a habit of losing things so that is how he looks and I think that's acceptable and here we have him on the turntable uh, yes he's not the most attractive of figures but he's a chunky tank which forms the leg of a humongous combiner. I know a lot of you uh, may want to display this in your Bruticus mode, but I actually think he's a very nice brawl, and I'm kind of torn with the display him as brawl and have the unique toys, Bruticus, or vice versa, or maybe just get another one of him as well. I mean, these are cheap compared to most other third party products on the market, and that certainly isn't reflected in his build quality. He is built exceptionally well, and I am genuinely very impressed with what Zeta have done coming away from Toy World and making an exceptionally good name for themselves. I mean, there's people buying these Zeta combiner figures left, right, and center, and had they stayed as Toy World, I don't think that would have happened. I don't think Toy World has that pull anymore and uh, i think zeta are definitely making a very good impression 
on that third party market. Uh, kibble wise, yes, we have the big backpack tank section there and we do have those treads hanging on the back of the legs, but this is brawl we're talking about there. Uh, this is something personally I would expect from this character. He is very kind of base heavy. He poses exceptionally well for the figure of his build. Uh, and yes, he is brawl without a shadow of a doubt. He has a wonderful head sculpt, really manages to capture the character. Uh, it is painted, although it is so bright that you would think it's actually light piped. We've got this nice reflective section on the chest there. I love the little kind of army detailing. The color itself is a very kind of deep foresty green, uh, very reflective of a tank of its age and yes, he looks the part. Right, it's comparison time to give you an idea of his scale. Here's a quick family portrait. We have uh, Zeta on Blastoff and Vortex there. We have the unique toys. Brawl, uh, who I still personally feel is the most animation accurate there. And we also have the Machine Boys Brawl, which is obviously just a repaint and copy of the Warbatron Brawl that gives you an idea of how these are scaling. It's like Daddy Brawl, Mummy Brawl and Baby Brawl. Personally, it's this comparison which makes me happy. That is kind of how a Decepticon should be. It's a great height. And speaking of height, Brawl stands approximately eight and a half inches from his toes to the tip of his head. That's about 22 centimeters and weighs in at more than adequate 472 grams. That's 16.64 ounces. Now let's take a look at his articulation. Although he looks like a brick, he is quite a nimble brick. The head can look up and down. We can go left and we can go right and we can tilt side to side. The shoulders are on these lovely razors up and down, which means we can actually get some flex to those arms. That's something I really hated about the Warbatron releases, they were kind of just pegged in. Uh, we got the ability to bring it up as well and down. We don't have any butterfly joints on there though, unfortunately. We can go all the way around. Again, this is all on a friction joint, no ratchets in there. We get not one, but two bends on that elbow. We get an upper bicep rotation and we get a rotation on that wrist as well as a pinned selection of fingers. Now, the lack of ratchets I find disturbing. I would like more in those arms. The waist can rotate uh, quite freely now that I've moved this backpack kibble up. We don't have an abdominal crunch in there either. We have hip skirts to the front and rear, which allows for the legs to come this far forwards that far backwards out to the side on a ratchet yay upper thigh rotation and we get a ratcheted knee bend there we go nice ratchet knee bend although my knee does tend to come unpegged from the rear where we pegged those in earlier on the toes go up and down quite nicely and ah we have a nice ankle pivot it's kind of on a big rocker joint here so you can get a fairly dynamic pose i actually prefer to have it slightly raised like that that way we don't have to kind of fiddle with it to get half decent pose i mean he's never going to make it as a ballet dancer but uh, that's dynamic enough for me right, now to get him transformed up we do have to disarm him let's just take a quick look at his gun it's a nice gun nice silver detailing on there uh, it's got these grooves on the inside, they just slide into the grooves on his hands, which holds it into place nicely. So yeah, nice gun, works, does exactly what we need it to. To get him transformed up, we want to close off these fists, straighten those arms. We have a flap on the arm, flip the hand up, over, bring that down and tab that back into place. The lower arm rotates 180 degrees and can then be pushed into that groove. 
these shoulder sections can come upwards. This piece here is on a sliding hinge. You want to slide that hinge all the way down. That comes up. This comes up. This wants to rotate 180 degrees. And then you want to just bring this in and push and tab those together. Pull and untab the backpack. These chest pieces here, if we grab these, want to slide those apart. His head is going to push downwards, sinking into the chest. And then we can bring these back together. I like that. I like how they just completely got rid of his head. That's a nice touch. Lift out this crotch panel. It's going to rotate around so it's facing downwards. This whole waist is going to rotate all the way around. The toes are going to close off. Once you bring the big toes in first and then bring those little toes in to close that off. You have to do it in that order. Next port of action, we have two spring-loaded sections here. You want to push those in, and then as we push those in, this can come down and collapse into place. You have to do it in that order, or you won't be able to unlock that torso. Now, as you would expect, we need to pull that knee away. This joint is going to come out and then we are going to collapse this leg fully in and then close off this tab securing that into place do that with both legs if your feet are out you just want to push close in and bring these legs together push and lock that into position lift the retaining tabs up so we're now going to have all of that track just collapse down but that's a good thing you then want to bring these arms up and over and as they come down these are going to push and that is going to lock just inside there on that tab and at the same time there's a circular hole just at the top here that's going also going to peg in at the top so we're plugging it in to two points bring this over unfold it and as we bring this track down, there's a small hook which just comes out of there. We can bring that down and that's going to push and tab in like so, which firmly secures these tread sections at the front. And then bring these tab pieces down at the back there like so. There is a small peg just underneath here. That's going to tab in to this one in the crotch section, so you need to get that in there and give that a push. And then you want to just fully extend the turret. And then we get these rubber aerials, which we can just slot in like that. And we can, if you choose to do so, we can bring in the gun as well and place that on there. And there we have him in his tank mode. And it looks incredible. It's a really good tank mode, but not gonna lie, those tracks are a pain in the backside. They look amazing, but they have a habit of falling apart, coming off, and aesthetically, yes, they make a vast improvement. Because I mean, look. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work on here, does it? These, these do actually move it's just my cybertronium base on carpet these work a treat which which is great but i don't really think we need them i don't think it was worth uh, sacrificing some of the playability it just made the transformation more difficult than what it needed to be now the turret I still go left and right as far as i'm aware we don't have a great range of up and down motion there i can't really get it to move so unfortunately i just think it kind of takes away from some of the playability but the gun i think looks quite nice up on top of there i mean it is a very robust solid tank once you get everything pegged in but these tracks are the bane of my existence quick scale comparison that's not a bad size for a tank yes it probably should be 
a lot bigger, but I think that definitely works with the kind of masterpiece scale and aesthetic. And of course, last but by no means least, he does combine up, he forms the leg. So you want to push the turret all the way back in, lift the gun up. We no longer need that in position. Come around to the base. You want to untab these retaining tabs on both sides, lift these retaining pieces up, and you want to fold the treads. So this is where it gets a bit messy with this track. You want to lift up the whole upper piece here. You have to scrunch this section back into here again and then pull these side tabs down. This piece here pulls out like so, it rotates around and then comes down come to the base of the legs. Unfortunately, we now have to open them up again. Got to flip the hooks here. And there's also a hook just. This one is actually a proper nightmare to get out. You need to do that with both sides. And then we can bring these back in and tab those back together. And then just looking on the underside of the turret, we have these two pegs that come down you want to bring this down slide it on that sliding hinge and then there's these two pegs here that's going to come in and push and secure that ruddy firmly in to place that is the leg um it is very frustrating as you can see my chains just keep coming off. They are ridiculous. They look the part, but man, they do not work as they should. I want them to work, so I love Zeta. I really do love what they do, uh, but they have become more frustrating than anything else. But that is a leg. I mean, if we bring in Starscream, I mean, that is gonna be absolutely massive. Honestly, cannot wait to get Onslaught, so we can start putting these guys together and then we can get Swindle. But I mean, that is one massive looking leg. Honestly, cannot wait. Very excited for that. Hopefully we should be completing this Broticus in the next couple of months. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Maybe I'm doing the track wrong. I don't know, it's, it's a pain in the backside, in my opinion. It would have been nice uh, I don't know, maybe if there was a way of fixing it, uh, the track does seem to come apart slightly easier than what I would have liked. Uh, but all in all, he looks the part, and I probably will display him in his leg mode. Uh, but all in all, uh, it's going to work. I honestly cannot wait to see Bruticus combined. Uh, slightly concerned about this big gap that we have here. Uh, at the back, uh, but maybe that will be rectified when we get all of the feet and the leg adapters and everything on. Uh, but until then, thank you all for watching. I'd like to thank Robot Kingdom for making this review possible. If you like what you've seen, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share, and of course subscribe. And I've included a link in the description below where you can purchase more of these wonderful toys from Robot Kingdom and a link just up here for the Zeta Toys playlist. Until next time, from myself and uproar. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.